Now, beyond uh, standard sequencing um, protocols, we've we've also taken the opportunity to validate uh, other um, uh, applications on the platform, such as Olink Explore platform, and this, and you're seeing the uh, um, concordance between Illumina and uh, and and uh, sorry, Illumina and element sequencing on the same sample. So very, very high concordance. That concordance is with is um, the same or slightly better than intra-run concordances and uh, allowing, again, the platform to directly use uh, applications like Olink where we go through the ADEPT uh, protocol. We, ha we have done the same thing with 10X and some of their single cell work as you, as you see here. Um, we do have uh, a publicly available data set uh, available for download from, from 10X on the website for, again, for anyone to look into this. But you see, you know, very, very strong statistics uh, above specifications for, uh, for these applications, showing that the platform as it exists now is, is ready to use out of the box on a variety of applications. We've also had an opportunity to collaborate and, and look at um, conditions where we really wanted to answer the question, is the higher quality data we see on the platform, uh, does it make a difference? You know, and then what is, if you take advantage of the higher output of the flow cells, can you apply them in a meaningful way, say in a translational or, or, uh, or clinically relevant manner? So in collaboration um, with the investigator shown on the slide at UCSD, we, we had the opportunity to look in a research-based project and at some consented samples that had a, a very rare eye condition. And summarizing this, what we what you can see here is using a, a single uh, a single flow cell with just over one billion reads. We had Q score Q30 scores at 94.6 percent, very strong index assignment rate, and a total yield of 326 gigabases. We intentionally sequenced the, the parents at a lower coverage to give higher coverage to the proband. And you know, so here we have a 20x maternal, 21X paternal, and, uh, and almost 52X coverage in the pro band. If you add these up together, you actually notice this is, this is over 90X total coverage, giving confidence that at this read depth and this yield per, of gigabase, we're able to actually generate uh, three 30X genomes per flow cell. And remember the instrument is a two flow cell instrument, giving a high degree of flexibility. The turnaround time is approximately 44 hours. And that's whether you run one flow cell or two flow cells run under the, in, within that 44 hour time window. And if you, if, if you recall, the paired N150 kit has a cost of $1,680. And when, if, if we can achieve three 30X genomes per flow cell, you're at, you're at less than $600 per genome and sequencing costs um, without the need to pool large numbers of samples per run. So a very efficient, uh, very efficient capability. When we look at coverage uh, per, um, um, and total error, and this is looking at a genome in a bottle sample, HG005. And, and what's shown here in yellow is a publicly available Illumina data set, and then shown in red and blue is element data analyzed under two different models. And the specific analysis tools used here were, was Google Deep Variant. And this analysis was performed by Andrew Carroll at Google. And we're plotting total error for, so this is the total error for SNPs and indels, a, the sum of the false positive and false negative. And we can see at 15x, we're about we have approximately 50% fewer errors in Illumina. At 20x, that number condenses some, and you notice that all of the platforms um, really have approximately the same amount of total error as we get to 30x, meaning that most of the most of that error is taken care of by consensus sequence, which we've known for years is an advantage of short read consensus sequencing as you can remove error as you go forward. What we're working hard to understand now is how we can lower this error to be as good at 20X coverage as we are at 30X. And we're, uh, we're, we look forward to um, releasing some of this data and the path to achieving this in the near future, but we're working very hard to understand this. What we also wanna really appreciate is, you know, some of these differences here, or do they matter? And that's what we'll show here. So in this case, looking at HG005 again, 15X WGS, this analysis was again, was also per, uh, performed uh, by Andrew Carroll at Google and on, on our behalf um, using our data and was recently presented at the AGBT conference. So in this case, you're looking at heterozygous calls in red, homozygous calls here in yellow. You'll notice the two platforms for the calls that are made accurately are quite similar. 
But the, the difference is in the number of false candidates that you see at 15x coverage. Illumina shown here, large number of false candidates, and then a relatively small number of false candidates here in Element. Now, to be fair to Illumina, many of these false candidates will be filtered um, during the filtering of the VCF file. So that is that is a possibility, but it is, it is still a significant amount of data in the raw calls. But the, if you recall the earlier chart, the expectation is this would collapse um, as we go to 30x coverage, but in fact, it does not collapse significantly. We still have this high degree of additional false candidates in the Illumina data compared to the element. This is just showing us confidence that the element data is just, it, by its nature, is much cleaner um, under these conditions. We can look at this over multiple runs and, and again, see the, see the same pattern, and including under uh, different sequencing on element, different platforms, PCR free as well as PCR plus runs. And again, the trends, the trends are quite consistent when we look at that. We had, we did have an interesting opportunity. And as, as if you recall the uh, UCSD data where the, uh, the parental samples were sequenced at lower coverage intentionally. So Google's deep trio and which is, uh, described here in the uh, bioarchive paper um, that's uh, that where the link is, is here, was designed to take advantage of trio-based sequencing to do more accurate and more specific de novo calling, which is very important in, in pediatric disease, as well as also a very good surrogate for somatic variation. And here's what we see in these results, which are quite compelling. So the true calls, and this is, this is now using, again, a known truth set trio, the genome in a bottle set HG002, 3, and 4, but focusing only on chromosome 20. Um, and that's just to make the data a, a workable amount, of a, a very reasonable amount of data. So for true de novo calls on chromosome 20, there's, there's just under 40, which is accurate. But if we ask what are the false, how many false de novo calls do we make? And you notice that this is a significantly higher number. And the way this trends is the, uh, although our sequencing costs are highly competitive, even with the most um, high output platforms, our sequencing quality and variant calling accuracy allows the downstream filtering and downstream annotation process to actually be quite a bit more streamlined and therefore uh, saving both costs as well as time um, in these in these downstream applications. So again, uh, you know, a fairly compelling set. I did also want to mention one last piece of data, and this is the last slide um, in the presentation, and that is, we've also been looking at low diversity library sequencing and performance, and this is this is now looking specifically at methylation libraries, so bisulfite or enzymatically converted libraries. In this case, specific, we sp we're specifically using New England BioLabs enzymatic conversion. And so this is where we started, shown in this plot here. And this is, again, where we started, where we, where we saw this drop off of Q30 at the end of the read. This is a, a Q score of 30 highlighted with the red line. And you can, again, see where we dropped off. So we knew that this was suboptimal um, in this data here. And notice that we this aligned rate is indicative of the percentage of phi x that was used in the run. So we were, we were supplementing the run with 30% phi x, trying to maintain a high pass filter rate and high Q30 uh, a score rate. But note our pass filter rate was only 86%. So we developed a low diversity analysis pipeline, and then we're able to achieve a much, much improved performance where now our pass filter rate is at 96%, but we still had to include 30% phi x. And we knew that this, you know, having to give away 30% of the reads was not optimal. So we reworked that and, and, are, and we've now achieved uh, the following capabilities. And this is all with, the, again, methylation libraries. So note the pass filter rate are, are all above 93% when we have either 0% phi x, 2% phi x targeted or 5% phi x targeted. So we were a little bit over here, a little bit under on this one, but with only two to 5% phi x or even 0% phi x, we can still maintain very high Q scores, very high pass filter rates, meaning that we now have the, it's an optional capability of using phi x in some of these low diversity conditions. And we're, we're not stopping here. We're continuing to work on this quite hard. As you go up in library loading concentration and as you go up in density, and I should say this pass filter density translates to between 900 million and a billion reads. Um, we do see a little bit higher sensitivity in these low diversity libraries to that, to getting sequencing in the 1.2 to 1.3 billion reads. So we do know that you, that if we push this out, 
to the same degree I showed you in some earlier examples, we will there there will be a slight loss in pass filter rate. So we're, we're that's why one of the reasons we're continuing to work on this. So I know I've covered a, a large amount of information and large amount of data, but it was really in the effort uh, to prove uh, and show that the, the, although the platform has been recently commercially launched, it is quite mature relative to the competition and and uh, and is. Um, ready to be used under a variety of conditions, um, and we can support all all major library preparations on our website. There's uh, there's 13 application notes, and then a large number of kits and other things that have been validated on the platform, where we truly can support uh, the vast majority of applications that are used in the in the in the field today. And anything that we do not support or isn't directly um, shown. We're delighted to hear from investigators so we can uh, make that turn that into a priority. And so I'll just recognize all of the people at Element that have contributed to this, um, uh, which has truly been a, you know, a monumental team effort over the last five years, um, as, as shown here in a recent company photo. So um, thank you for the opportunity to present and to be more than happy to answer any questions.